This is RVTV. You're watching, dear viewers. Welcome to English News Broadcast for this hour. Coming up are the major headlines for today. Community-based communication strategies boosting health services in Ansaba region. Call made for integrated soil and water conservation in Ansaba region. One in five of world's migratory species at risk of extinction. And the dust toll rises to 54 in southern Philippines landslide. On your domestic reports, the introduction of community-based communication strategies by the Ministry of Health is making a substantial impact on improving health service delivery in the area. This was highlighted during a review meeting held on February 8 and 9 in Karen, where the effectiveness of these initiatives was evaluated. Dr. Henok Tsahaye, the head of the Ministry of Health in the Ansaba region, emphasized the critical role that community-based communication, combined with ongoing public awareness campaigns, plays in enhancing public understanding of health matters. Dr. Henok also pointed out that a concerning 5% rise in malaria cases, signaling the urgent need for more comprehensive environmental sanitation efforts to curb the spread of communicable diseases. At the meeting, Ms. Amina Nur Hussein, Minister of Health, urged for stronger community involvement in continuous awareness and sanitation measures to combat communicable diseases effectively. Ambassador Abdullah Musa, the regional governor, encouraged local administrators to align their efforts with healthcare facilities to maximize the impact of these initiatives. In a significant move to enhance agricultural output, Ambassador Abdullah Musa, the governor of Ansaba region, has underscored the necessity for a cohesive approach towards soil and water conservation. This call to action was made during his evaluation tour of the development initiatives within the Glass Administrative Area and the Haggas Semi-Urban Center. The visit also included fruitful dialogues with agricultural specialists, partners and the inhabitants of Al of rather Haggas semi-urban center. Highlighting the critical role of food security for both humans and animals, Ambassador Abdullah urged the community to amplify their efforts in this direction. Moreover, he provided a comprehensive overview of the planned developmental activities for the year 2024. The meeting engaged in thorough discussions on various topics brought up during the meeting and adopted various recommendations, including the introduction of Harat transportation service to different administrative zones within the subzone and the completion of the portable drinking water project in the Shitel administrative area, among other initiatives. On your last local report, Af Abed Secondary School handed out awards to 13 students, including four females, who scored higher points at the 2022-2023 National Living Examination. The awardees are members of the 35th round of the National Service. At the ceremony conducted on 7 February, in which heads of line ministries, PFDJ, national associations and religious leaders, as well as parents and teachers took part, Mr. Al-Amin Abdullah, director of the school, congratulating the outstanding students, highlighted the significance of the awards in fostering a competitive spirit and motivation among the student body. Mr. Mohammed Ali Dries, the head of the education office in Af'ab subzone, acknowledged the promising results in the national examinations. However, he emphasized the need for a unified effort to enhance secondary school completion rates. Furthermore, Mr. Saleh Jabir, the PFDJ secretary for the subzone, alongside Mr. Gergi Smetsgeve, the managing director in the subzone, urged parents and the educational community to intensify their support. They also encouraged the awarded students to continue striving for excellence in their future academic endeavors, setting a benchmark for success and competitiveness in higher education. The viewers will be back with your international reports and more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. 
More than a fifth of the world's migrating species are at risk of going extinct as a result of climate change and human encroachment, according to the United Nations' first ever report on migrating animals published today. According to the report, billions of animals make journeys across deserts, plains or oceans every year to breed and feed. An unsustainable pressure put on migratory species could not only see their populations decrease, but also disrupt food supplies and threaten livelihoods. Of the 1,189 species covered by a 1979 UN Convention to protect migratory animals, 44% have seen numbers decline, and as many as 22% could vanish altogether, the report added. The numbers were based on assessments and data provided by the International Union for the Conservation of nature, as well as the Living Planet Index, which collects population numbers for more than 5,000 species from 1970 onwards. On today's final report, the death toll from a landslide that hit a gold mining village in the southern Philippines has risen to 54 people and 63 others are missing, authorities have said. The landslide hit the mountain village of Masala in Davao de Oro province on Tuesday night after weeks of torrential rains. Davao de Oro's provincial government said in a Facebook post that 54 bodies had been recovered, raising its previous death toll of 37 earlier in the day as rescue workers found more bodies. At least 32 residents survived with injuries, but 63 remained missing. Among those missing were gold miners who had been waiting in two buses to be driven home when the landslide struck and buried them. The viewers used to watch us on every TV and now a very quick recap of the major headlines. Community-based communication strategies boosting health services in Anzawa region. Coal made for integrated soil and water conservation in Anzawa region. One in five of the world's migratory species at risk of extinction. And the death toll rises to 54 in southern Philippines landslide. That was it for today, dear viewers. Thanks for watching.